button. So warm welcome to everybody, especially to our invited speaker, Tina Mede and Barbara Jimitz from the DLR. Um, I would say we have more than 100 uh, pa registered participants and we want to work with regions outside our network. So we, this event was open to everybody and we warmly welcome also the participants who are not yet uh, part of our membership. Maybe that's a good um, occasion also to say briefly something about Nereos for you to better understand who we are, what we do and uh, maybe to keep in touch with us. Um, uh, REOS is a network of European regions. Currently, we have 23 uh, European regions and 33 associate partners. And our common mission is to spread the use and understanding of space technologies. What do we understand of space technologies? Earth observation, Copernicus, uh, Agnos Galileo, uh, um, global satellite navigation, navig satellite communication, uh, exploration technologies. And our main issue is really to bring these technologies in regional context, in territorial context, to show the, uh, opportun the business opportunities behind it, to show the employment opportunities, the um, dimension for education and training um, and to better exploit these systems that have been built at a European scale. Mm, Nereos works on three main pillars. Um, the first pillar is very important to us. It's the political dialogue um, with relevant institutions on behalf of regional space users, advocating interests of regions in this respect, making sure that programs that support space, like the Horizon Europe program, like other programs, are accessible for regional stakeholders, that regional stakeholder can well participate in them, and make sure that uh, Europe does not only build the infrastructures, is at the forefront with, uh -huh. uh, uh, with uh, uh, technologies, but also to think of the use that comes after, to make the connection to society, to make sure that the space-based data and services are connected to the needs, the challenges on planet Earth and in regional ecosystems. Um, uh, uh, Inter-regional collaboration partnerships is a second important pillar of our activities. We understand ourselves as a platform to mobilize our partners, to mobilize EU and ESA funded initiatives. We support them in the whole project cycle. Um, and our main mission is really there to provide the information, to connect them well, to find like-minded partners and uh, uh, get engaged. In some small, strategic, uh, uh, in, um, for some small strategic purposes that have a metal model character for the uh, regions, we decided also to engage um, in projects. An example is the uh, Erasmus Plus funded initiative in the area of education and training for the geoinformation sector Copernicus. Another example was a Horizon 2020 funded coordinate project where different Copernicus relays uh, worked together. And we are currently also part of another Horizon 20 funded project, the Impressive project, where uh, the consortium developed uh, 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 maritime services that is of great interest for port authorities and maritime actors at the regional and local scale. And um, the third column on which we work is outreach communication. Um, for one example is we share exhibitions that tour through our regions. We had one space girl, space woman, uh, uh, showing the potentials of space in terms of employment, in terms of uh, education, uh, uh, um, job opportunities, and showing also how women are involved in that. <laughs> our next uh, exhibition will be Space for Our Planet, portraying different uh, 
actors um, and showing the links between space technologies and to reach for sustainable development. With this cut short, um, today the center of our webinar is the European, the Horizon Euro program. We want to learn more about it. We want to better understand uh, uh, what are the priorities, um, what are the upcoming calls, and see who would like maybe to get engaged, who would like and to prepare well for those upcoming calls. We are very glad to have the speaker today um, from the European Commission, Ms. Tina Mede. Um, uh, you are the first one, the floor is yours. Please uh, uh, introduce us to the Horizon Europe program. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Roya. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you also for the kind introduction. Um, yeah, I'm very happy to present to you today Horizon Europe and in particular the space opportunities which you find therein. Um, I have prepared a presentation for you, which I will upload now. Can you all see this? Yes, we can see it. Um, if you could, Miss Mende, click on Reading View, so the open book, and then it's perfect. Perfect. Okay, it should work now. Well, yes, uh, good morning uh, to everyone again. Um, uh, yeah, I'm very happy that there is such a big interest uh, into this event, and I would like to thank Nereos again for organizing it. Uh, because indeed uh, Horizon Europe has a lot to offer in terms of uh, opportunities for space and um, I'm very happy to guide you uh, through this uh, in my presentation in the coming half an hour. Um, what I would like to say beforehand is that um, uh, all what I'm presenting to you is for the time being work in progress still because the Horizon Europe Work Programme has not yet been adopted. So please uh, take all this with uh, some caution. Um, this, is, this is tentative information and it is subject to the final approval of the Horizon Europe Work Programme. Now, in my presentation, I would like to cover five uh, areas. Um, first of all, uh, the new EU uh, space program. Uh, I would like to come then to Horizon Europe and give you some update on the objectives, uh, on the structure, on the budget. Um, I would also like to, to give you more information about where space is placed in Horizon Europe. Um, and then come specifically to the space downstream R&D um, uh, calls we are planning for the year 21 and 22. Last but not least, um, I um, plan to give you some information also on other important R&D opportunities for space downstream. And here in particular, the Cassini um, initiative, which is open to space upstream and space downstream. Um, each NSS Copernicus in other Horizon Europe clusters and the EIC instruments, which are specifically uh, interesting for, um, for space uh, startups and SMEs, which are highly disruptive and very innovative. Now, this year is a very important year for us because we could reach a political agreement on a new EU space program. And for the first time, uh, we have um, a single uh, EU space program which covers all our space um, activities and programs under one single umbrella. Uh, so you find Galileo and Agnos there, you find Copernicus there, also two new um, actions, the space situational awareness and the governmental satellite communication um, activities. Uh, we have a quite considerable budget for this, 14.8 billion euro for the um, period 2021 to 2027. So this is really 30% uh, more than uh, in the previous um, financial uh, period we had for, for space programs and activities. And what is very important for the downstream area and downstream research is 
that the new EU space program foresees a reshaped role and responsibility of the GSA, which will be, become the new uh, EU SPA, so EU space program agency. Um, and uh, with this, uh, it will also be in charge for the user uptake and the research and development, not only for Galileo and Egnos, as it has been so far, but also for Copernicus, uh, Govs.com and uh, space uh, situational awareness. In addition to this, EUSPA will also support the Commission with the Cassini initiative. So it has really quite a quite a substantial um, task and responsibility in this area. Um, now the investment um, uh, you see under the EU space program is really considerable. Uh, it is uh, combined uh, with Horizon Europe and Invest EU, and with this uh, we believe this will uh, provide really substantial support for the European space industry, and will contribute uh, contribute to competitiveness and innovation. Um, Horizon Europe, um, I tried to put uh, basically all information which is important and relevant uh, to space um, and the structure of Horizon Europe in this one slide. Um, Horizon Europe is the new EU research and development program uh, for the years 21 to 27, which will soon start. It is the biggest EU research and development program we ever had in terms of funding. We have a budget of 95.5 billion euro. Um, and uh, it is divided into two building blocks, which you see here on this uh, structure table. The first one is uh, the European Defence Fund. And the second one is the specific program implementing Horizon Europe and EIT. And this is what you see in the centre. Um, if you look now at the structure of this uh, specific program implementing Horizon Europe and EIT, you see that we have uh, three pillars. So it's a bit a similar three pillar structure as we had already in Horizon 2020. You have the first pillar on excellent science, where you find all activities uh, from the European Research Council, from Marie Curie, and from research infrastructures. Uh, you have the second pillar, Global Challenges and European Industrial Competitiveness. Here you find um, uh, the uh, digital industry and space uh, activities being placed, and I will come to this in a moment. Uh, and the third pillar is on Innovative Europe, uh, where you find the European Innovation Council actions, European Innovation Ecosystems, and the European Institute of Innovation and Technology actions. Now, going a bit further into this pillar two, which is uh, most interesting for us and where we have space included, you will see that we have here six different clusters, we call it. A cluster on health, the first one, the second one is on culture, the third one on security. Uh, we have the fourth one on digital industry and space. Cluster 5 is on climate, energy and mobility, and cluster 6 on food, bioeconomy, agriculture and environment. And now going a bit further into this digital industry and space, um, and going into what is being included here, um, you have actually uh, 10 areas of intervention. And I have uh, included them here on the slide for you, which you see um, uh, uh, down below. And you see here that area of intervention number 10 is space. And we have in this uh, cluster also very important uh, other future uh, areas such as artificial intelligence and robotics, circular industry, next generation internet, manufacturing technologies. Um, and this gives you already an idea of the fact that we really had a very, very high competition uh, when it comes to the budget for space. So altogether, there is an agreement that for the whole cluster form, so for all of these 10 areas of intervention, uh, there is a budget envelope of 15.348 billion euro. Um, and if we look now at the uh, space budget, uh, we have an internal agreement on this. Um, 
uh, which says that space will receive uh, 1.75 billion euro out of this share. So it is a bit more than a tenth, referring to the 10 areas of intervention which I just presented to you. I think it's 11.4% of uh, the budget of the whole of cluster four, but yeah, that it is. Um, looking now into uh, the, um, uh, into uh, you see that I put uh, a few of these areas in a light blue under pillar two and pillar three. These are areas where you also find um, uh, actions, activities which are relevant for space downstream. This is why I, what I wanted to highlight, and uh, it is something which you will see later then, and I will refer to later in my presentation. Let's see. Yeah, going now into this famous cluster four, digital industry and space. Uh, I try to provide here an overview um, on what is covered. We have first a block on upstream space. Um, so activities where we provide funding for the whole upstream space area. We have a second block then on EU space program components and emerging initiatives. And here you find the uh, space downstream activities in the area of development of applications. Uh, and we have uh, as well Cassini, uh, the Cassini initiative, uh, which is open to downstream and upstream activities. So this is also something where um, there are opportunities for companies. So this is why I highlighted it as well in yellow for, for you. And finally, we have the targeted and strategic actions. Um, I come now here um, uh, in this slide uh, on the uh, call for space downstream research and development in Horizon Europe, which we are planning for the year 2021. Um, here, really, what I want to stress is that this is tentative information. It basically summarizes the current stage of discussion we have. Um, what is uh, publicly online? Uh, is uh, the uh, draft work program, and you find the link here included. Um, actually, you find this information online because all information which comes from expert groups, including the uh, program committee on um, uh, cluster four, so the shadow program committee we have, needs to be uh, published for transparency reason, and this is why you find the draft here on the link I provided. And also what I'm referring to now is this draft. It's not yet the final version. Um, but going into this now, um, if you look in the different uh, topics which will be in this call, we are planning to have included firstly EGNSS and Copernicus applications fostering the European Green Deal. Uh, the second topic is EGNSS applications for safety and crisis management. And the third topic is EGNSS applications for the digital age. Uh, the topics will all be innovation actions. So there will be a funding rate of 70%, except for nonprofit legal entities where a rate of 100% applies. Um, and I will come to the single call, topic calls uh, in a moment. Now, let me come here to the uh, first, um, the first uh, topic, and this is EGNSS and Copernicus applications fostering the European Green Deal. So, actually, here, for the first time ever, we are planning a joint uh, call for EGNSS and Copernicus, uh, because in our view, the area of the European Green Deal is the one most suited to fostering more synergies, and this is really um, a very important objective from our side. Uh, the proposals are invited in any of the following areas. A zero pollution ambition for a toxic free environment, mitigation of natural hazards, supplying clean, affordable and secure energy, accelerating the shift to sustainable and smart mobility, building and renovating in an energy and resource efficient way, from farm to fork, uh, and preserving and restoring ecosystems and biodiversity. 
And when I say joint call, just to, to um, emphasize again, the proposals can submit either um, uh, project proposals built on EGNSS or built on Copernicus, or, and this is of course the ideal solution built on uh, both EGNSS and Copernicus. And uh, in uh, this topic, as in the other two topics, I will present uh, the expected final TRL of the solution developed shall be between seven and nine. And we come to the second action. Um, the second topic is EGNSS applications for safety and crisis management. And here we have uh, in particular two subtopics. The first one is on improved emergency disaster risk management and societal resilience. And we have a number of uh, actions uh, where we are inviting proposals to. Um, and the second topic is on timing and synchronization applications, focusing on emerging networking synchronization needs of critical infrastructures, meaning electricity networks, telecommunications, banking and finance. And here again, we have a number of actions which you find um, highlighted uh, in the talk against which we are inviting um, um, uh, proposals. The third topic is EGNSS applications for the digital age, and here uh, proposals may be submitted in the areas outlined, such as um, Internet of Things, mobile solutions, mHealth solutions for the silver economy and robotics, artificial intelligence, uh, big data, geotagging, optimization for multiple sensors, Cybersecurity, so EGNSS based solutions which are stimulating privacy, security of location data, exploiting synergies with quantum, sharing economy, EGNSS solutions for logistics, mobility services, goods and food, and sports and fitness, smart wearables. And what is uh, common to all of the three topic areas, which I was just outlining, is that the, the proposal shall exploit the EGNSS differentiators. They shall deliver new innovative applications with a commercial impact and a clear market uptake. Um, what we would like to encourage is the participation of industry, in particular SMEs and mid-caps. Uh, we also want to encourage the participation of countries without a space tradition, to call it like that. Um, the involvement of postgraduate researchers is very important as well. Uh, and what is really crucial and key, as it was already in Horizon 2020, is that we want to have a business plan and evidence of user engagement, so this is compulsory. And it shall be provided as a part of the proposal, because for us, it is extremely interesting uh, that uh, there is a demonstration really of the user need and of the sustainability of the project uh, beyond the lifespan of the project. Um, public regulated services are not in the scope of uh, these uh, three actions. And the proposals under this topic shall exploit synergies and be complementary to national activities and activities funded by ESA. Um, now I come to uh, the uh, call for scene for 2022 for space downstream R&D. And you see that uh, in 2022, we will have more activities. We have actually six topics altogether. Um, um, these six topics are EGNSS applications for smart mobility and innovation action, public sector as Galileo and or Copernicus user, which is, which is a PCP, Copernicus downstream applications under the European data economy and innovation action, uh, large-scale Copernicus data uptake with artificial intelligence and high-performance computing, a research and innovation action, um, designing space-based downstream applications with international partners, research and innovation action, and gov.com service developments and demonstrations as well as research and innovation action. 
Um, what I would like to highlight here is that uh, you find more information on the type of actions and in particular on the specific conditions for pre-commercial procurement uh, in uh, the Horizon Europe general annexes. And I have seen that a draft of these general annexes is already on the, available on the internet. So if you are interested in this, uh, then uh, you can find uh, the draft uh, information on this already. Now, uh, in the following, I will rush a bit through these um, topics uh, because uh, that will be only for 2022. But still, uh, I can. Uh, I, I would like to give you already some impression on, on what we are discussing. Um, uh, we will have, or we are planning to have, an EGNSS applications topping for smart mobility. Um, and here, proposals may be submitted in the areas of aviation, maritime, rail, road, or follow a multimode approach. Uh, and what is very important here for us is really to anchor EGNSS um, in these uh, areas, in aviation, in maritime, in rail and road. So we are uh, looking for realizing large scale demonstration and implementation projects. The expected final TRL of the solution shall be between seven and nine. Um, let me come here and I will spend a bit more time on this, on the PCP action, because I think this is, uh, uh, could be very interesting in particular also for regional authorities. Um, uh, and this is an action on the public sector as Galileo and or Copernicus users. So again, a joint call we have, but we are inviting proposals to be based either on uh, EGNSS or on Copernicus or on both. And here we are inviting demand driven innovation actions by public um, authorities, which are focusing on the development and adoption of EGNSS applications and Copernicus applications, which specifically meet the needs of um, public authorities. Um, uh, it is actually an open call and open call means that we have no preset topics for this. Uh, what we do in the um, call text is that we give examples on areas where we think a PCP action would be particularly interesting or beneficial. Um, and you see these examples um, displayed here on the slide. So, for example, it includes mobility as a service, cooperative ITS, public transport, smart cities, monitoring of infrastructure, crisis emergency management, civil security applications and border management, sustainable development, coastal area monitoring and modeling. Uh, but all these areas, we are giving them as a way of example of, of basically of inviting proposals, uh, but this is not preset. It could be also another area. Um, what is very important though to us is that uh, there is really a focus on very clearly identified needs. Um, and that the proposal is very specific and demonstrates a sustainable solution beyond the lifespan of the project. So uh, it's something very close to the market. Uh, the requested solutions should be validated for field testing in at least two European countries. And um, the uh, PRS related activities are not in the scope of this action. Now, I will be a bit quicker for time reasons on the other topics. Uh, we have a topic on mechanical downstream applications and the European data economy, uh, which is about new or improved applications, products and services by exploiting Copernicus data assets and services products, um, which uh, is uh, required to adopt the state of the art ICT technologies, make use of European data infrastructures, et cetera. The activities are expected to start at TRL level 5 and achieve TRL level 8 by the end of the project. Um, uh, the next uh, topic is large scale Copernicus data uptake with artificial intelligence and high performance computing. And here the activities are expected to start at TRL 3 level and achieve TRL 5 by the end of the project. Uh, we have an action, a topic um, on international actions, uh, which 
should focus on technical developments of EU space-based applications, dissemination, awareness raising, etc. Uh, and finally, govsatcom service developments uh, and uh, demonstrations. Um, now, let me also give you, uh, but only very briefly, some information as well as about other important R&D opportunities for space downstream. Uh, the Cassini initiative is, as I mentioned, open for um, startups and SMEs in the downstream sector. And here you find um, uh, Cassini hackathons and mentorings. You find Cassini prices, Cassini business accelerator, Cassini seed and growth funding facility, um, Cassini matchmaking with investors and Cassini industrial partnering. And you find more information on this on our Cassini website, uh, where I submit the link here included. Um, um, my colleague Thomas uh, Johnson has presented already Cassini in uh, the Nerois uh, framework, so I'm not going into detail on this here. Uh, just to say that we will have funding from Horizon Europe, uh, from the space program, Invest EU and EIF for Cassini. And there are a lot of different actors involved. Uh, the Commission, of course, EU SPA. Some of the activities are also in collaboration with ESA um, or with the EIF under the Invest EU program. Uh, and uh, I outlined here a few um, initiatives uh, specifically coming from Horizon Europe. Uh, what can be interesting here for you in this context is that uh, we are planning to have an EIC Horizon and Cassini Prize for digital space applications uh, and in particular um, a maritime application. Uh, this is something where we are now uh, preparing the rules of the contest, which will be out after the summer break, uh, so you will have further information then. Uh, the Cassini Business Accelerator and Cassini Hackathons and uh, Mentoring. Now, something else which I think can be really uh, very, very uh, interesting for space downstream companies and uh, actors is that this time we managed to anchor um, uh, EGNSS and Copernicus really very broadly also in the other um, Horizon Europe clusters. Um, uh, we will have more than 100 calls which will relate uh, to Galileo and Copernicus as well. So where this is part of um, the uh, solutions thought for. If you're looking, for example, uh, in the area in the cluster of security, uh, there are 26 topics which are relevant to Galileo and Copernicus based solutions. And I put a few examples here. Um, many of them are in the areas and very interesting for public authorities, uh, such as increased safety, security, performance of the European border and uh, coast guards, custom authorities, autonomous systems, etc. So basically for all these areas, anytime a project uses Earth observation, positioning, navigation, or timing, it must use Galileo agnos copernicus data first uh, it can use as well in addition to this other earth observation or positioning uh, navigation and timing services but the first use must be on galilean copernicus um, uh, in cluster five uh, we have uh, which is climate energy and mobility we have 33 topics which are relevant to galilean copernicus based solutions and in cluster six, we have altogether 36 topics um, and uh, quite a lot, as you can see here in the area of biodiversity and ecosystems. There's also a pre-commercial procurement uh, for end user services based on environmental observation in the area of climate change. Um, all this information, actually, uh, we will um, be very happy to promote uh, to you further once uh, the Horizon Europe Work Program 421 and 22 is adopted. And let me finally come to one other um, instrument uh, where I would like to raise your attention to. Uh, it is not in our um, bread and butter, uh, bread and butter um, uh, space uh, program, but uh, the European Innovation Council has uh, separate activities. 
but they are very interesting, I find, for space uh, startups and SMEs. You have the Pathfinder, the Transition and the Accelerator instrument. They are working at uh, different uh, TRL levels. Uh, the EIC Pathfinder at the TRL level of 1 to 4. EIC transition at the TRL level of 4 to 5 to 6, and the EIC accelerator working uh, much more closely to the market. Um, it is for single startups and SMEs. Uh, there are grants available of up to 2.5 uh, million euro and equity investment to scale up the company activities of up to 15 million investment. Uh, so I think quite uh, interesting and what is interesting as well is that um, for all these instrument, there is really a lot of budget available. I know from the EIC colleagues that the competition is also very high, but um, also the budget is high. Um, so actually, if you look into the EIC accelerator, the open instrument, you have um, around five, 593 million euro just for the year 2021. Uh, for the EIC accelerator, um, there is um, a challenger section. Uh, the difference between open and challenges is that open invites for topics from all kinds of areas, it is really bottom up, there is no predefined topic, uh, whereas the challenges uh, have set predefined topics, and here you have as predefined topics, the Green Deal innovations for the economic recovery and strategic technologies for digital and health. So I think in both of these areas, um, space-based application can play um, quite a role and it could be interesting to apply. Um, and yeah, this is just, uh, you know, some information a bit aside from our, um, from our space downstream um, program, which uh, could be uh, very worth uh, pursuing and following as well. So I thank you very much um, for your attention. This was my last slide. Um, I, I really hope that uh, this uh, little journey through the uh, Horizon Europe plant activities um, um, has uh, shed some light on the structure, on the objectives, on where you find uh, the different activities. Um, I very much hope that you found activities which are interesting for you. I invite you to really um, check then all the uh, relevant information and links um, and uh, yeah. I thank you very much again, and I'm available for any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Tina Mede, for this interesting and uh, a very important presentation. I think it gives us a lot of food for thought. and. Um, what we very appreciate is that you put a strong focus on the two um, calls that are very relevant, the PCP call and really uh, uh, our network is about downstream services, so really good, giving a good introduction also to this part. Um, now we would like uh, to open the floor for questions, comments, um, things you would like to know more in detail. Um, please uh, refer to the chat and signal us if you want to ask a question, because you are too many uh, participants that won't work with raising the hand. Write to us in the chat. Uh, we are monitoring the chat and uh, we'll be very glad to give you the floor. Um, Mrs. May, we can, uh, 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 can you provide us after the meeting with the slides so we can share them with the participants? Yes, of course. Okay. Yeah, I would like. Thank you. So we, I wait for questions. Are there any before moving on? Okay, I don't see any. So maybe at the end, <laughs> we give okay. once more the floor. <laughs> at the moment, I think people need to digest. Thank you very much, Tima Nede. We, we stay in touch. Um, to, to see about the further evolution of the work program. 
<laughs> then I would like to give the floor to our next uh, speaker, Mrs. Barbara Jimenez from the Europe, from the German um, Space Agency, the DLR. And um, Mrs. Jimenez, you are also part of the NCP network for the German uh, government. You manage the national contact point that supports applicants, different stakeholders to better access EU funding and participate in uh, EU programs. As an NCP, you are also part, like us, of a European network. <laughs> and for us, it was important to invite you to this meeting to show to our members and also to the participants um, the support structures and uh, the activities and uh, uh, the, so, yeah, the, the, the help the NCPs provide to interested applicants. Thank you, the floor is yours. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, I will show you the presentation. One moment, please. So can you see it? Yes. Fine, thank you. So good morning, everybody. Um, I welcome you to present our NCP network project. I'm invited to talk of this because one point is it is part of the framework program, so Horizon Europe. It was also in Horizon 2020 and before. And the other thing is that we also are a network. So. Um, I would talk uh, first about the national contact points because we are, uh, are a network of national contact points. Um, I don't know if everybody is familiar with these um, services and so I will introduce a little bit. Then I will talk about our project because this network is called is a project which is funded under Horizon 2020 and uh, it's called Cosmos 2020 plus. And then um, I will give you the information about what's your benefit of this pro project or network. First, the national contact points are an essential part of the EU research and innovation programs. It started in uh, 28. Um, so there are for different items, the um, network projects and we have the network project for space. It is a professionalized consultation and support service. And the um, advantage for you is that you get on-site information and support in your native language and all this service is for free. We are we, because I also work as NCP, we are officially, officially nominated to the European Commission. Um, so NCPs exist in all member states, EU member states, also as uh, in associated countries. And also other countries have national contact points, um, which have interest in cooperation with um, the Horizon Europe or what was in Horizon 2020. So about Cosmos, Cosmos 2020 plus, so this um, network project is not yet funded um, under Horizon 2020. It started in June 2019 and will end at the end of this year because there will be uh, a follow-on project, but which is not only um, for space, but it will contain all the cluster four. Actually, in uh, Cosmos 2020 Plus, we have 22 space NCPs from 22 country, countries, which are our partners and also 15 more space NCPs um, which are associated to Horizon 2020. DLR, as so the German Aerospace Center, is the coordinator of this project. And um, the implementation is through my colleague Adrian Klein and me. 
the very first NECVET project started in 20, uh, 20, in 28. Uh, 2008, sorry, <laughs> in 2008, and was called Cosmos. If you want to have more information, you can find it um, on the web page, the address you see here at, at the bottom of the slide. So, what are the objectives of the network project? Um, so, it's in, um, we are we're helping to improve the information flow, flow between all the space NCPs so that all are at the same level of information, which they give further to the um, applica applicants in Horizon Europe, or it was in Horizon 2020. But also we give best practices to the NCPs so that they have a good qualification so that are um, really um, professionalized and uh, we also give improved partner uh, project partner search support um, and we have additional services like a website as I told already we have a newsletter which you can get by e email and we are um, organizing events for example, international um, info days on the calls in, on behavior of the European Commission. And um, we help, the networking is also important to support smaller NCPs or smaller um, EU, uh, member states, EU member states or associated countries. And also we give um, advice for new EU member states so that they um, will get fir firm with the program very easy. And we it's very important that the, all the NCPs have the same level of professionalized um, services. So what is your benefit? As I already told you, we have a website with up-to-date information of on um, relevant space topics, on calls, on um, also events, etc. You see uh, uh, again the oh. internet address. Then also there you can get information for the newsletter, so you can subscribe to the newsletter. And we organize events um, to inform you on the calls um, which um, are upcoming. It will be with the new um, network, uh, it will be with the new network project the same. The new network project will start at the beginning of next year, so that so the, um, that we have a good um, transition from Horizon 2020 to Horizon Europe. That there will no gap between. And. You, we can support you with international project partner to search. That means if you plan a project and you need already, uh, or you need still partners, we can help to find international partners. And um, the best way to help you is if you consult your national space NCP, which will you find on the um, funding and tender portal from the European Commission. So this was uh, my um, quick or f uh, small overview of uh, this network project we have. Thank you. We appreciated your presentation. For you, it is also okay if you share your presentation afterwards with the partners. For oh, sure, yes. Perfect. Um, then we can open the floor for questions, comments. I saw that um, Bremen was interesting to uh, um, uh, uh, ask a question. Ellen Horstmann, the floor is yours. Okay, I had to unmute myself. Hello, good morning. Um, and uh, thanks, uh, first uh, of all, for, uh, for both presentations. And my, my question uh, was, um, 
uh, was to uh, Tina, I think, uh, was your name, uh, to the first presentation. And uh, it was uh, about the timeline uh, regarding the decision making process um, on the working program. Do we know anything about that? When may we expect uh, the adoption of the, um, of the program? That was my question. Yes, uh, thank, thank you very much for the question. Um, well, actually, at the current stage, she cannot say that much about the timeline. What we can say is that, let me put on the camera as well. Um, what we can say is already today that there will be some delays. Um, you have seen probably in this draft working program, which was circulated already, that um, we were targeting an opening date of the first calls for the 6th of May. Uh, here we know already that um, this will not be possible um, because there have been some delays uh, due to discussions with the member states, um, but also due to some internal um, uh, internal technical um, implementation uh, problems. So basically at the current state um, for the cluster four, we will still have uh, the meeting with the cluster four shadow program committee, where uh, we are looking of course for, for a positive opinion. Then DGRTD will have to, uh, to get together the uh, response from all the different um, shadow program committees, also from the other clusters, uh, and then basically um, um, it needs to prepare the commission decision, so it will still take uh, some, some time for that. This is all I can say uh, at this moment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. Um, we will monitor this process uh, carefully and also inform regularly via our website and our news flash newsletters on the evolution. Other questions? Now is the chance. If there's no question, I would like to take the floor to ask Ms. Medel something because of Cassini. Mm -hmm. um, I know there is a uh, web page and there uh, this initiative um, collect all the uh, projects and other programs which are, have their budget to fulfill the projects. Um, to help the SMEs. So will Cassini also have its own budget um, for projects or you know, whatever programs, or is it only the collection, the umbrella for activities which are under the other programs? Yeah. yeah, thank you very much for the question. Well, Cassini will have its own uh, budget. So basically part of this budget will come from Horizon Europe. And I have uh, tried to put this in one of the slides, but I know there was lots of information provided. So basically from Horizon Europe, uh, you will have budget for the Cassini prize, um, prices. So we have several prices, but we have one downstream related prize. You will have budget for the Cassini um, hackathons, mentoring, and from the Cassini uh, business accelerator. And these are actions planned for 21 and 22. In addition to this, for other activities which fall under the Cassini initiative, we have other budget sources coming from the space program and coming also from InvestEU. Um, and this is then more related to the uh, seed and growth funding, uh, which we uh, intend to organize and to the matchmaking activities. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ah. <laughs> Further question, because mm -hmm. I think it's very in, important and interesting for SMEs, this Cassini. Yeah. So how will they get always informed? Because I know that 
there is um, some calls now in the work program of Horizon Europe, mm -hmm. but they are not announced uh, under the Cassini, not yet, under this Cassini webpage. So how will the SMEs or startups will get further information when there's a new initiative or project or where they can apply? How do they will know? Um, well, they get the information uh, if it is um, actions under the Horizon Europe program, of course, via the funding portal where the calls will then be published because for the time being, everything I presented here are still is still draft information, so you can't find it there. Um, I'm very sure also that uh, the USPA, the GSA, uh, as it has done in the past, will be very active promoting this because EUSPA is very much also involved uh, in the Cassini initiative. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we have the Cassini website, which you mentioned already, which is also a tool then of, um, of, uh, uh, of publishing uh, information for us on Cassini. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. There's a chat in the chat. There is um, something written from Mrs. Sanchez. Ah, yeah, I see you now from Madrid. And um, Mrs. Sanchez, maybe you share your question with us and um, uh, uh, we would like to uh, 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 discuss it. Please, the floor is yours. Yeah, hello. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I don't know whether my uh, connectivity will be uh, good enough for the sounds and, uh, and camera and everything, but in any case, my question, well, first of all, thank you all uh, for the presentation. Very, very useful, very informative. So thank you so much. And especially to Nereus for organizing that. Eh? So that's the uh, first uh, comment. And, and I have, uh, in fact, two questions. And the, the one is in case that uh, there is a, um, uh, a different information on the type of action for a, a certain topic uh, regarding the, uh, I mean, uh, whether to take a look to the conditions for the call on, I mean, this uh, table at the beginning or you go to the topic itself when the type of action is also uh, So in case of inconsistencies, uh, one prevails and the uh, is to, 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 to have a good approach consortium building and uh, kind of fun. Uh, um, uh, depending on that, we will um, expect uh, different TRLs at the end, so different possibly uh, consortium uh, team. And my second question um, will be sorry, in relation to the deadline. Sorry, sorry, uh, sorry, Mrs. Sanchez, the connection was not good. Could you repeat your first question? Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I'm doing my best. Uh, sorry, but because I'm working from home and that's it. But uh, my question uh, very shortly is in case of inconsistencies between uh, the type of actions uh, on, on a certain topic, um, depending on whether to take a look to the condition for the call, this um, table at the beginning, or you go to see the type of action declared in the topic itself. So in case of this information is not consistent, which information prevails? I don't know if um, um, it's I have to say, I didn't, I didn't quite get the question. Where do you see inconsistencies? Uh -huh. Yeah, um, uh, the, the structure of the, uh, of the document uh, at least the, the draft uh, um, that is uh, available uh, establish the conditions for the call. And um, in, the, in this table, there is um, usually um, an indication on the type of action. Mm -hmm. But then if you go to the topic and you see which is the, kind, the type of action for that topic, you can see another type of action. That is the inconsistency found. 
In, in any case, um, the only thing which counts at the end is the work program, which is adopted. And what I'm presenting here is really only information, which is very tentative. Everything can still change. So please, please, please. I mean, as I said in the beginning of my presentation, uh, just take this as, as the current state of discussion and the current thinking we have, but not as the final version. So the final thing is then really the approved and adopted document, um, the work program, uh, which will be available in um, a few weeks time. Um, and please, for any action, refer to this because there you have, you know, the valid information included. All right. Thank you. I, under, I understood. Oh, thank you so much. And then came my second question that is uh, uh, considering that and um, and, uh, and, uh, and that uh, th there is a, 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 an uncertainties on the on the timing for for adoption. Uh, the, yes. The the the. the um, uh, the, uh, I, I, I was assuming that uh, it was fair to um, to to have a deadline, uh, a delay on the deadline, establish a deadline um, that allows the participants to build the consortiums properly. What 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 are the plans about that? Um, well, the issue is that really there have been more discussions uh, between member states and uh, quite a number of technical implementation issues. So this is why we are at the current stage. And actually, uh, when we were invited uh, to, to this Nereus, uh, Nereus webinar, um, we thought that by now uh, there is already an adopted version. We had a discussion, you know, whether it's better to present the current thinking or to, to cancel uh, the event um, uh, and have it at a later stage. So basically, um, uh, we will provide all this at a later stage, but for the time being, uh, this uh, is actually not yet everything approved. Huh? And uh, th there are delays, and uh, this is the only thing I can say at this moment. Um, I can present, and this is what I did, uh, the current state of thinking, but please take this as preliminary information. All right, I understand. So, uh, can we uh, consider that, uh, is, is, is there a chance that deadlines will become postponed somehow? Um, well, this is why I haven't given any deadline for the calls in my slide for the call for 2021, because we know already now it will be postponed. Unfortunately, I cannot tell you to which stage uh, it will be postponed. I see. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. I saw that um, Barbara Jimenez uh, would like to <laughs> ask a question. No, I don't comment. want. I want to add something for the first question. Uh, normally, in the call text, it is written wh where the at what uh, stage of TLR, so technological readiness level TRL, so um, the project should start. So then you know if it is an innovation action or a research and innovation action. So you know the uh, funding quote. Because um, the if you have to start at five or six, then you know it's an innovation action. And if you in the text is written, you start at three, four, something like that, then it will be a research and innovation action. So you ha can see it at the call text. And if there's a difference between the call text and the table, no, it will be corrected soon and you can have an image from the call text. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe one comment with the consortium building. I think it's a good idea to already access which topics are interesting and with whom we would like to work. You can then always, I, I don't think there, or I believe from your presentation, uh, Tina Meda, there will be changes, but I wouldn't expect them so revolutionary that you can't 
start brainstorming on it and looking with whom you would like to work together also telling other partners what you are interested in what are your expertise where are you good in might be already at this stage uh, a good option thank you okay <laughs> tip. Yeah. so then we come to the end any other question anyone would like to take the floor no okay then we can close at this um, point um we thank the two speakers very much it was very informative um we would from the reo side would like to keep in touch with you really well monitor the process <laughs> and uh, 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 let our partners really know about the, the different steps that are now coming, so they are well prepared to respond to, to a call. Um, to all participants, we like to thank you for having joined us. Um, we will document the event on our website and uh, share the slides with you. Um, we will monitor the whole process of the evolution of the work program and upcoming calls and we'll also brainstorm what other kind of webinars could be useful for you on the way to, to better access uh, 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 space programs. Um, with this, uh, we thank you and we wish you uh, a good day. Special thanks also to my team. Um, very well managed for so many uh, participants. Margarita, Prisati. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.